Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video we take a look at the new trailer for Little Nightmares 2 with a full analysis and breakdown of what is on show. We haven't seen anything new gameplay wise from this mysterious title in a little over a year since the original trailer debuted at European gaming event Gamescom. It was in fact at this year's Gamescom event where the new trailer was revealed, and it certainly looks like it's been worth the wait, although we will have to wait a little longer it seems, as we also received the release date which has now slipped from the original 2020 estimate to February 11th, 2021. It's a little further off than I had predicted, but when the game looks as slick as this, what's a few extra months wait? You can check out this trailer at Bandai Namco's YouTube channel which I'll link below, but for now, sit back, relax and let's go through it step by step in this analysis. Ok, so let's start at the top. One of the most obvious and unmissable elements of this new trailer is the incredible atmosphere created by the talented team at Tarsia Studios. The game has an even creepier vibe than its predecessor, and that's quite a feat. We got our first proper look at the city environment, where buildings tower above the protagonists Six and Mono, showing just how tiny they really are in comparison. Not only that, but the visuals themselves are also a big leap, with better lighting, effects work and detail on show here. But what about the gameplay itself? While Little Nightmares 2 indeed seems to continue the design philosophy of the original game, it adds in a host of new concepts and hazards to the mix. First up is fast travel. It is now confirmed as we previously theorised that Mono has his own supernatural abilities, which allow him to travel through the various television sets found around the game world. Now whether this happens in a linear fashion or potentially allows for backtracking to older locations remains to be seen, but it's great to finally get confirmation on this exciting gameplay element. But travelling through these TV sets isn't the only way to get around quickly. This trailer displays how Six and Mono are able to work as a team to shortcut through environments and access previously unreachable areas. Six is not only able to help Mono traverse the game world, she also helps him avoid many of this nightmarish world's traps and pitfalls. These hazards come in the form of bear traps, falling objects such as logs and shelving units, and swinging pieces of machinery. It looks like this world will be far more dangerous than the one we experienced while aboard the moor. However, while this duo seem to make a great team, they won't be together throughout the entirety of their adventure. The game begins with Mono travelling solo, something we already knew. However, this new trailer reveals that there are other points during this story where our travellers become separated. Many instances show Mono by himself. This suggests that perhaps he is unable to always bring Six through the TV broadcasts with him, and may be required to find her an alternate route to his current location. Next, let's take a look at the enemies and their environments, starting with the Hunter as he seems to be the first boss character we will encounter. The Hunter is a psychotic taxidermist who stalks the woodland Mono is unfortunate enough to awaken within. We get to see a little more of him and his behaviour here in this trailer. It is also confirmed that the shack seen in previous teasers is, as speculated, his abode. It is also confirmed that Six is held prisoner in a room full of cages on the top floor of this derelict old house. Looking at the wall markings, it seems she and several others over the years have been held captive here for quite some time. This seems to be the duo's first encounter, and it isn't too long before they team up to exit through the attic. However, they make a little too much noise, and attract some unwanted attention from the aforementioned Huntsman. The Huntsman carries a shotgun and seems like he'll be a crack shot with it, meaning if he spots us with his searchlight, then it's an instant game over. Thankfully, the trailer showcases several ways to keep a low profile as our heroes sneak through tall grass and cower behind fallen tree stumps. There isn't too much more to say about this creepy character, so let's move over to the teacher. 
The teacher is by far the most horrifying of the new character designs found within Little Nightmares 2. She was of course first revealed within the moor in this picture here, and it seems perhaps the pianos found around the moor belonged to her as she is seen playing one here. Early poster art revealed her neck was able to stretch out in a snake-like manner. It looks like something straight out of Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. This new footage shows her freaky abilities in action, her neck snaking around the bookshelf here to quickly take us by surprise. It can also twist 180 degrees exorcist style so the teacher can see who's behind her without ever needing to turn her body. That really is the stuff of nightmares. Along with the teacher we get a short tease of her evil porcelain students too. These creations must be smashed apart with whatever comes to hand in order to stop their advances. In the case of this trailer, the tool in question is a hammer. Next up, those reanimated bodies and the morgue-like hospital environment they inhabit. This location was perhaps the most unsettling scene so far, often pitch black and only explorable via flashlight. Mannequin limbs are found strewn about the place, and decapitated corpses laid out on stretchers and beds. It seems this place is some kind of Frankenstein's laboratory, a place where perhaps the mind-controlled citizens of this city are led to their slaughter, or experimented on after death, or perhaps both. Reanimated using spare mannequin parts for a currently unknown reason. Reanimation and preservation after death certainly seem to be themes in this sequel. We see severed hands scuttling towards us like facehuggers from the movie Alien. Now we saw in the original trailer that Six and Mono have to work together to overpower and destroy these creepy crawlies. Living mannequin hands reach out to grab us too, and it seems the only way to stop these mangled living corpses from attacking is to keep our flashlight on them at all times, the light seemingly fixing them in place. An interesting note is how certain enemies in the original Little Nightmares were also repelled this way, so there seems to be some kind of connection here. It also doesn't seem as if all of these hybrid mannequins are active. Perhaps a certain event triggers them, or worse, maybe some will attack while others lay dormant. This would mean we are constantly kept on our toes, never knowing if an area is safe or not. We also get a brief look at a terrifying new enemy type which seems to be a worm-like creature which crawls across the ceiling in this shot here. It's likely this prowls the hospital setting trying to grab us from above as we progress. Last but not least is the towering terror, the Broadcaster. He controls the minds of the townsfolk with his broadcasts and wears a top hat and suit. His body is unnaturally stretched out and elongated. This body is very similar in appearance to that of the Hanging Man. Now this is interesting because both the feet of the Hanging Man and Teacher can be seen in this picture within the mobile game Very Little Nightmares. Seemingly these two were the guardians or parents of the Pretender. So check out my theories on how these characters are all connected for a more detailed analysis on this. The bottom line is that this broadcaster's stature is familiar, and this may tie him directly to both the moor and the nest, making him, as we had previously theorised, the architect behind everything bad that goes on within this grim world. Outside of speculation, a wealth of new information on this character has now been revealed. He can travel through the screens of the television sets, just like Mono as seen in this shot here. It seems Mono is a child he wishes to capture, most likely because he shares a similar power. Now this may be because he is related to Mono, or simply feels threatened by his presence in this city. He certainly seems drawn to him, and floats through the world as a glitched out signal, emanating we must assume from the signal tower at the city centre. The broadcaster also seems to be able to teleport short distances to quickly catch up with Mono as he flees, and the trailer shows quick shots from several chase sequences as well as what may be the game's final boss encounter in the rain-drenched city streets. 
All of this looks incredibly exciting, and I think this trailer has got us all pretty excited for Little Nightmares 2 when it releases early next year. But with that said, I think we've covered the crucial points of interest on display here. Do let me know what you're most looking forward to in the comments section below, and remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.